Welcome gents. I'm here to show you our trigger interface called the FTB. Now the FTB is a power device and uh, it has the automatic uh, shut off after four hours so that it complies to your standards. It has a little um, gain control and it has six quarter inch inputs. And these quarter inch inputs allow for single zone or dual zone. So you can get 12 inputs on the side. And that's controlled by whether you use a quarter inch mono jack or quarter inch stereo jack. You just plug it in and it becomes single zone, dual zone. And on the back, you have the same thing. You have six outputs that's either a single zone or a dual zone, depending on what you plugged in on the front. When you plug something in, luckily with our KTM1 module, a two box module that has stereo inputs, you just take a stereo cable out, in rather, to a stereo cable out, and away you go. You also notice that there's an HD15 connector on the front and the back. And this is in addition to, so you can plug in an HD15 cable so that you have a breakout. So if you have a drum module that you're connecting that doesn't have stereo inputs, here you go with individual mono outs for each of the inputs. And we have both an input and an output of that. Because if you wanted to plug our hybrid kit, which is essentially our drum cat without the brains, in the back there's a connector and here's that same cable. One cable connects to here, the other cable connects into the FTB, and you can have another cable that goes out of the FTB directly into the module. And that also applies for a product like a jam cat. So here you're seeing 12 uh, pads, and here's the breakout. In this case, they're all stereo, and they go into the, the six inputs for the 12 triggers. So we're going to demonstrate now um, how it works with a two zone, a single zone, in heads, and on heads. Okay, so now you're going to see this is our two zone on head. One quarter inch cable plugs in, and one quarter inch stereo cable plugs out and goes directly into the KTM1, and I'm plugged into the snare drum so we get snare drum and rim. Now what's really important is to understand the settings on this two box, because you have to make sure that it's going to see a two zone. So you set the pad type in this example to pad PP. And I found that a gain of 9 with a threshold of 48 is perfect. And I'm using a negative curve 2 so we can get the widest dynamic range out of it. On the rim, I lowered the threshold a little bit because I don't want any interaction between the uh, head and the snare. So that takes care of that. So the first thing I want to do is look at a MIDI scope and just check out the incredible wide dynamic range coming from this pad. Single digits. The entire MIDI dynamic range comes from playing that pad. And by the way, you have to give it a really good whack. So here is the rim. And you notice, on a two zone, there is absolutely no interaction between the two zones. That's what makes the... FSR so incredible that you could have multi zones on one surface without any interaction of any kind. So, this is the two zone on it. So, here's an example. This is of a single zone called the Trig Cat. What's fun about this is that this could be put on any flat surface. 
It could go on your bass drum. It can go on your snare drum, your tom-toms. So here I have an old zone. It's a single zone. So I'm using a mono cable going in, mono cable going out. And here's the fun thing. I'm going to play around the edges. Look at the MIDI scope. Nothing until I actually hit the drum. So take a look at the uh, at the screen here. Uh, I mean, playing on the drum itself. <laughs> Nothing happens until you hit the drum itself. And by the way, you can put a uh, a pad on top of here so that it's um, it's like a rubber surface. And that's particularly useful when you want to use it for your um, for your bass drum. Okay, on to the end head. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the hybrid head, which is an acoustic hybrid drum, and it's a single zone. So we have a quarter inch cable plugged in, quarter inch cable plugged in here. All the settings are the same on the drum. Now I'm going to do this so you can see what I'm doing. Take a look at the MIDI scope. There's nothing on the planet that has this kind of a dynamic range. Okay, so in this example here, we have a drum that we're, we we're working with with DW. We put the electronics inside so that they just plug in directly. In this case, this drum is a um, it's an on head, and what we did was we used a the hoop to hold it down by using a mylar, basically a cut up um, acoustic head to put it in. I think for the um, this is a really great thing because you have the drum that's recessed down, so it allows you to put triggers on the rim. So we could have a two zone here, and plus we can have the rim, and it looks like an acoustic drum. Pretty cool thing.